Waiting can be hard. Pre-orders went live for the HTC Vive back in February with a shipping estimate of April. We're getting towards the end of April now and many people who pre-ordered their Vive on day one are still anxiously awaiting them to be shipped. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we got our Vive. The bad news is you have to watch us tear it down. Having just had the Oculus CV1 on our teardown table, we felt pretty confident in our ability to get the HTC Vive up and running. What we didn't plan on was the complexity of setting it up. While the Oculus had one IR camera that just sat on your desk, the Vive requires a bit more installation. Two base stations need to be placed on opposite sides of the play area, and then using the controllers, you need to map out your play area so the Vive can hopefully prevent you from walking into anything important while you're using it. After our extended setup, we were running out of time to actually play with the Vive, but inspecting the headset revealed some interesting differences from the Oculus. While the Oculus used a slider to adjust the lens distance, the Vive uses a rotating knob that seems to allow for finer adjustment. The Vive also allows you to easily adjust the screen distance with just the turn of the knob, while the Oculus requires you to replace the foam insert to make that adjustment. Getting into the Vive proved easy enough. Unscrew and remove the screen distance adjusters, remove the faceplate and pull apart to reveal a whole lot of sensors, 32 in total. These photodiodes take in IR light from the two lighthouse base stations as they flash and sweep light across the room. This method is the exact opposite of the head tracking technique found in the Oculus Rift. In the Rift, the depth mounted camera tracked the IR emitters in the headset, whereas in the Vive, the headset sees light from the mounted IR emitters without actually tracking its location. On to the motherboard. We get to the crowded motherboard and find the ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M0 microcontroller, the Toshiba made 4K HDMI to MIPI dual DSI converter, also found in the Oculus Rift CV1, and the Alpha Image Technology System on Chip with Image Signal Processor. To see the full list of chips, check out our teardown at ifixit.com. After removing a rubber gasket, we get to see the lens adjustment mechanism we mentioned earlier. It's a simple threaded rod with a slider on top. While the Oculus Rift has something similar, this knob can do finer tuning with less complicated mechanics. Once the lenses are separated, we take off the display cover and get a closer look at the display. Each display measures approximately 91.8 millimeters diagonally, which translates to approximately 447 pixels per inch. For comparison, the Rift CV1 has approximately 456 pixels per inch due to a slightly smaller display that still packs the same resolution as the Vive. Finally, we pop out the Fresnel lenses. Unlike the hybrid lenses we encountered in the Oculus Rift, the Vive's lenses appear appear to have a uniform contour. It seems that HTC opted to control focus through adjustment of the eye relief. We've come to the end of our teardown and now we turn our thoughts towards repairability. How did the HTC Vive score? It got an eight out of 10 and here's why. On the upside, although it's complicated, the headset breaks down readily and without damage. The head strap and face pads are removable and don't incorporate any sensors or electronics that might be prone to failure. Standard Phillips and Torx screws are used throughout the headset, controllers, and base stations. And reuse of the touchpad hardware from the Steam controller means some replacement components are likely already available. But on the downside, adhesive is used sparingly, but secures the lenses, lighthouse base station covers, and sensor arrays. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high-quality images and a look inside the controllers and base stations, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.